A global team of scientists monitoring a network of pulsars, some of the most extreme objects in the universe, has announced evidence of a new type of gravitational wave signal. This evidence is for a gravitational wave background, a constant hum that is rippling spacetime and is likely caused by millions of pairs of merging supermassive black holes. The announcement by the International Pulsar Timing Array, which is a consortium of four pulsar timing groups, is evidence of a gravitational wave background. Each of the groups monitors many pulsars and, over the last 15 to 25 years, have built up enough data to finally see this new type of gravitational wave signal. The collaboration isn't yet calling it an outright detection, but instead they're calling it strong evidence for a gravitational wave background but they do claim that there's less than a one in a thousand chance that the signal seen could be caused by anything other than gravitational waves. A background is different to the individual events seen by our ground-based detectors, where they can point from each chirp in the detector to a specific merger of two neutron stars or black holes. The signal seen by the pulsars is caused by merging supermassive black holes, millions to billions of times the mass of the sun, but they can't see individual mergers or in spirals just yet. Instead, what they see is a cacophony of signals all adding together, creating a constant hum of spacetime. Merging supermassive black holes orbit each other very slowly on wide orbits, and they are huge objects, meaning they emit gravitational waves with a very long wavelength. These mergers also occur in the very distant universe, and as they travel through spacetime, they mix with similar gravitational wave signals from other supermassive mergers. If spacetime were an ocean, ground-based detectors would let us see individual large waves, but pulsars are now letting us see the overall choppiness of the entire ocean. And that, in turn, is teaching us about what's in the water. There is a supermassive black hole at the center of every galaxy. So when galaxies merge, which we know they do, their supermassive black holes eventually merge too. The evidence for this background will teach us about the number of mergers happening throughout the universe's history and can give us an insight into the properties of the black holes doing the merging. It might also let us study more exotic events that might contribute to a gravitational wave background too, such as cosmological inflation, phase transitions, cosmic string collisions, or other theorized events that may or may not also contribute. That is the power of pulsars. They're neutron stars that use their incredibly powerful magnetic fields to funnel radiation into jets that are ejected into space. And they are so bright that they can be seen from across the universe. They also rotate, usually very quickly, and this means that the jets process too. If the jet happens to pass over the Earth during this rotation, then we see these objects as incredibly regular flashes of light in space. We call these things pulsars, and they have turned out to be very useful, and they can be used as nature's original gravitational wave detectors. We know of pulsars all around our galaxy, meaning these jets act as the arms of a galaxy-wide gravitational wave detector. Earth and the pulsar are the two ends of the arm. But while ground-based detectors usually only have two arms, this pulsar-based detector has dozens. They're especially useful because they can be used to detect different types of gravitational wave than those detectors that we have built on Earth. The largest of those detectors features four kilometer long arms in an L shape, each with a powerful laser being shone down it and they can be used to detect gravitational waves from merging black holes and neutron stars. The mergers that they can observe only involve objects that range in mass from about 1.5 to 100 times the mass of our sun. Using pulsars though, we can see a whole different type of gravitational wave. They are much lower frequency, and the waves detected with pulsars have wavelengths that range from decades to light years, making them about 100 billion times lower frequency than what the human ear can hear. It's similar to different wavelengths of light. Comparing ground-based detectors to pulsars is equivalent to comparing X-ray telescopes with radio telescopes. They let us see a whole different type of object and different events, a different part of the gravitational wave spectrum. So this really is giving us a whole new window into the universe that we've never seen before. But how do pulsars actually let us detect gravitational waves? 
By timing the pulsars over many years, we know the expected intervals between flashes of light from each pulsar. We usually use pulsars that flash on the order of every few milliseconds, which means that the pulsars are rotating absurdly fast. These flashes are monitored by the largest radio telescopes all around the world, and this is done by the four collaborations that make up the International Pulsar Timing Array. By subtracting the actual observed arrival times of each flash from the expected arrival times, we get what are called the residual timings. If all is calm, they should match perfectly and the residuals would be zero. But if a gravitational wave passes through and alters the path of the light by stretching or squeezing spacetime, the observed arrival time will differ from the expected one and will get a non-zero residual. In practice, this is actually really hard to do because of inherent noise in each pulsar's pulses and errors in our timing too. And that's why we use a whole array of pulsars and not just one by comparing the residuals across the whole network, something we call cross-correlation of the data. We can see the common effects of gravitational waves as they pass through the whole galaxy-sized array. In the future, it's a goal to create a map of the gravitational wave background, just like we have maps of the cosmic microwave background, and also to detect individual mergers of supermassive black holes. Let's also talk about one of the cool plots released in the papers announcing this new signal. This is from a nanograph paper, and it's one of the really good pieces of evidence for the gravitational wave background. The blue circles are the data data points seen in the pulsar timings, where they had 2,211 distinct pairings from their 67 pulsar array. The blue lines here are the error bars, so it's possible that the circles could really sit anywhere on those lines. On the horizontal axis, we have the angular distance between pulsars, so you can think of it as how far away two pulsars are on the sky. And on the vertical axis is the amount of correlation between them. So a measure of how similar the timings should be. The black dashed line here is called the Hellings Downs curve, and it's the prediction for what we should see for a gravitational wave background. The more that the data matches that curve, the more likely it is that we saw a background. The fit of the data to the curve here is pretty good, but to be fair, it's not perfect. For real data, it never will be perfect, and this is pretty close. Observing the pulsars for longer will give us smaller error bars eventually, and over time we'll either see the fit get better or worse, and then we'll have more information about what we're really seeing in the data. But for now, they're calling this very good evidence for a gravitational wave background. I should also emphasize that this is a really hard measurement to make. The pulsars on the end of the arms are really far away, and they have their own insane gravity and complicated physics going on. The changes they're measuring in the timings too are absolutely tiny, so seeing anything at all here that we can make sense of is remarkable. Leave me any questions you have about this in the comments below, and thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like, you can check out one of these videos. This one here goes into even more detail about what a gravitational wave background is and why we care about it, and this one here goes into the details of how to detect gravitational waves here on Earth. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!